segment two, Golden Black Live. I, I hate to gush because these are two of my favorite people and I don't get to spend enough time with either one of them. So we decided instead of going to a bar or a co a coffee, mm -hmm. we're coming here to talk. And that's that's a great treat for me personally and hopefully for, the, for them. Kathy Wright Eager, uh, head of the Cranert Leadership yeah. I want to say though yeah. the right term, Cranard Leadership Forum. No, it's Academy. How do you? What do you? F well, it's not Cranard. It's the yeah, be, yeah, yeah. John uh, Wooden. John Wooden. Me. Yeah, the John Wooden Leadership Institute right. is what it's called. Yes. And, and I'm off to a great start here. Yeah, that's it is right. Wooden versus <laughs> Cranard. <laughs> Dr. Will Miller. I don't know yeah. what you, how you best classify him, yeah. but he is. He has been MCs mm -hmm. at a Purdue events. He's a stand-up comedian. He has a religious life that uh, that uh, is wonderful in its mm -hmm. own right. And you kind of observe all things uh, uh, from a psychological standpoint. I've been a therapist for a long time, and, and recently I've added, and I'm really thrilled, that Purdue, um, you know, Purdue, like a lot of institutions, is starting to get into online, you know. Mm -hmm. it, and the mm -hmm. Brian Lamb School, which is mm -hmm. really renowned, started a master's in uh, strategic communication. Think about if you're in PR, and the MBA is not quite the right fit, mm -hmm. but strategic communication. And so I'm on the faculty, I'm teaching, and I'm teaching, don't laugh, wait for it, ethics, I'm teaching <laughs> ethics, but I'm teaching my ethics. Are they, are, is there any, are there principles to your ethics? I follow a text. <laughs> <laughs> you get a lesson plan every week. Brian hit on something, and, and Kathy, we've talked a lot about leadership, and you see that firsthand, and uh, not just in, in men's basketball, but in all sports. Mm -hmm. We've had conversations about where football has been and where it needs to be but you look at you look at daryl hazel and what he is about it seems mm -hmm. to be they're they're heading things in the right direction there oh my gosh i i could i could sit here and talk for five hours about our leaders on the football team right now this year i mean they have a i will never quit attitude and it goes all the way down in the locker room that's great. first of all they got the locker room back and yeah. i think that's you know the first step and they just represent what Coach Hazel wants, and they are the spokesman. And that's what, one of the things that we did is some research, and the millennial generation gets their information three ways. Their parents, which I was excited that we're, we're still in the, you know, in the yeah. we're still in there. Um, and the second one is the internet, and third is their peers. So it is, it's just so important that we have good leaders on every single team because they're the ones that are really rallying the troops and yeah. the distinctive is obviously for for fans appropriately you know you're passionate about sports and you think about uh excellent execution but it's not lost on anybody that that throughout uh, uh an athlete coming to fruition that the issue of character mm -hmm. is a huge topic mm -hmm. and in the glare of the spotlight these days mm -hmm. and you know we think about all of the uh, the, the the ethical challenges say in the nfl today etc mm -hmm. which has really yes. rattled them mm -hmm. but it comes back to colleges because not only is daryl hazel obviously tasked with putting on a field a winning team but it's also and i think it shows with what mm -hmm. you're saying it's like what he's communicating about the character of the team about winning and excellence and doing your best absolutely and i know it's a learning curve for our freshmen because honestly that's another thing with the and i keep i i hate keep saying the millennial generation but it is if we want to be really good we have to understand you know their thought process mm -hmm. and part of it is it's really hard for them to come in their freshman year and not play right away right. and not be the the best and so then they start they kind of go off on little tangents and that's when those leaders have to say hey we're thinking about your character right. you've got to be patient here until mm -hmm. it's your turn to play and in the meantime you have to you know just now let's go back this. to something very important that you referenced which is like one of the one of the key uh, um, influences is peers well, let's yeah. just talk about something that's kind of uncomfortable, that for many Division One athletes who come up, and especially in the premier sports like basketball and football, mm -hmm. the men, they have come from environments where the peer group was not a very good role model mm -hmm. for them. Yeah. In mm -hmm. other words, they come from uh, mm -hmm. uh, circumstances where uh, they're, they're coming in, not only are they adapting to a, you know, the speed of the game and mm -hmm. the high level of, and, and finding their place at the bottom after they've been stars that you're yep. talking about, yep. you're talking about, whoa, this is, this is what it means to be a, a person who, who does the right thing, mm -hmm. in other words, so it's, it's ethical reformation at the age of 18, that's 18 years yeah. of these other influences. I admire these coaches and the other players who sta stand with and around and mm -hmm. surround these kids to help them make themselves into the men and women mm -hmm. that we know that they can be. And Absolutely. Not, what's more important than that? No, nothing. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And in football's had, even though as much as Daryl Hazel's talked about that, you're going to have hiccups, and they've had Absolutely. three or three or four here yeah. in the last two weeks. Yeah. Do those people ever end up on your doorstep, or oh what? Do, and and yeah. when they do, you don't have to tell us what they yeah. say. But yeah. what do you? What do you? No. What, what's your message at that point? You know, that's the part. I mean, I think for, for a while they avoid me because they're embarrassed and yeah. they think, mm -hmm. you know, it's that parent thing. They think that they've let everybody down. And I had one in my office today, and he said, you know, I just. I just feel bad. I mean, and this isn't the person that you recruited, and yeah. and, and they do feel bad. And it is it's a lack of a judgment, and and that's the thing that I just try to say. You have to constantly think about that you are representing our whole family. Mm -hmm. And when you, you say know? hiccup, uh, Ellen, I think that that's the right thing <laughs> that because is. it would be a real embarrassment to uh, any coach or recruiter or leader adult to say oh wow we really missed the boat in other words we didn't see something right. in this person and that happens but it happens rarely yeah you know and so even when someone kind of goes into the ditch mm -hmm. on a weekend or something and some of that's mm -hmm. being an 18 year old knucklehead with chemistry issues yeah. 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 <laughs> you know Absolutely. adolescence yeah well and one of the things that we've tried to do is set them up in this edps class which is mm -hmm. ed psych and right and talking about the the mental health, the tools to deal with stress and yep. anxiety. And some of them honestly have not lost more than two or three games in their whole career. That's right. They yeah. honestly, they are not playing. They don't really feel a part of it and they've never lost before. One of the advantages, one of the things I've been able the privilege to do is I work with a lot of law enforcement agencies on stress with law enforcement, mm -hmm. with the police. And one of the things I talk about is someone who goes into the police department to be a cop, they didn't just sort of decide to either do that or drive a truck for Walmart. Mm -hmm. They were passionate, they wanted to get into this. Mm -hmm. and and the policing is never really confusing to them. I mean, when they're on the job, whatever, mm -hmm. they, they know what they're supposed yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. What they have trouble with is the chronic stress of not having control with the agency, with the citizens, with mm -hmm. the community. I think it's in some ways is an analogy yeah. with, the with the athletes. It's like yep. they, on the field, mm -hmm. they're all in. Mm -hmm. What is hard for them is the chronic stress, mm -hmm. uh, which happens when I can't control it. I can't mm -hmm. make the coach put me in. I mm -hmm. can't beat this other person mm -hmm. out. That's what's hard on them. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mark L. Jones is an interesting case only because, um, well, many things. He's obviously mm -hmm. uh, he ran for 157 yards last week, and he's a very good player. But I thought Daryl Hazel on Wednesday at the uh, at the Gridiron luncheon talked about that the the growth. You know, here's guys that come in when they're seniors in high school, in essence. Mm -hmm. And how important that was, and yet as a parent, I'm not wild about that notion. Mm -hmm. But yet, in some ways, that's uh, that has been, uh, that, you know, it's allowed a guy like Markel Jones to come mm -hmm. in and now be mature enough to 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 be able to produce. He's obviously mm -hmm. talented too. But mm -hmm. does it change anything that you do when they have those those true babies in here when they when they're <laughs> when they're uh, when they should be seniors in high school and you've got these young guys on there? Does that uh, does that create any any challenges for it, you? It is a little different because sometimes we in volleyball starting to do that yes. too now, and so they miss out on a, like a lot of them won't take the EDPS class, so they aren't with um, the rest of the freshmen. Um, but it does seem like they're very, very, they're, I mean, they stand out. They're very driven and they're very focused. And they came here for a reason. And they came early for a reason. So um, I think part of, I, I guess that to answer your question, they have a lot of intrinsic motivation. Mm -hmm. Then that's one of our things to teach, you know, and try to get them to understand. We don't want to have to kick you in the rear end all the time. We want this to come from within. That's part of growing up. and. And it seems to me that that group has it. And Elijah Sindel are very much the same yes, way. Of course, exactly. they're right, the uh, uh, quarterback as well that uh, um, has a very bright future, it appears, for Purdue. Mm -hmm. All right, social media. You guys are both social mm -hmm. media gurus. <laughs> I always feel good when I get a favorite from Kathy right here, which, you know, that's good. And I know she's awake. Um, or very lonely, I don't know, one or two. Um, the impact of that, Will, I'll start with you, just on, on, on what that does at this at this age group mm -hmm. and and i know w there's been a lot of conversation about teams shutting it down and and matt painters talked about mm -hmm. that and whether that whether you can do that whether you can, whether you can uh restrict free speech so to speak but how do you view that from a, a psychosocial standpoint 
Um, you know, Glenn Sparks, my co-author of Refrigerator Rights, and he's one of the world's leading experts right here at Purdue on social media. And uh, I just had an occasion to speak to a large group of college recruiters in Boston. And I happened to be around one of the presentations where they were talking about, as they would, what's this next generation coming up? Mm -hmm. In other words, we're talking about the kids who are already here. Mm -hmm. talk, let's talk about the 12-year-old to 17-year-olds. Mm -hmm. Who's mm -hmm. coming in? One of the things that made everyone laugh out loud is it was pointed out they don't want to have a roommate. They, oh, that's, they, don't, that's they want to be private mm -hmm. and they want to interact with mm -hmm. their technology. Yep. And so I think the jury is still out. There's mm -hmm. a lot of like fear of, you know, OMG, we're not going to be able yeah. to communicate face yeah. to face. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know that we're getting to that point. But I think that's one of the distinctives about athletics is that mm -hmm. a kid who comes up, boy or girl, young man or woman who comes up playing whatever sport, volleyball, football, basketball, whatever, um, they have been in locker rooms where they have been compelled close up. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. football's odd because there's so many kids in it, but you know, volleyball and basketball, you're talking about a dozen friends mm -hmm. and man, you mm -hmm. are like nose to nose mm -hmm. with those people. And and that's I think the health of sports mm -hmm. is that is that it does provide some anecdote to social media where you're communicating live at yes. least in practice. Face to face. Because you know? everyone yeah. knows the cliche of like a whole family sitting around and all the kids are texting yeah. each other yeah. while they're next to each other. So yeah. I think Glenn would say it's certainly changing. I'd like to give you the, the conclusion, but we kind of don't know. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. going to have to play out. Mm -hmm. But from a leadership pers perspective, Kathy, what do you... You know, you have to even when you when you do communicate at that realm, when you're mm -hmm. a realm and you're a leader of a team, uh, there is responsibility with that. What's your yeah. what's your message to them in that? Well, form? I try to have my personal message to them to be upbeat and to be positive and to have that never quit attitude all the time. No matter what happens, that we're, the sun's going to come up the next day mm -hmm. and we're going to get right <laughs> back on it and yep. we're going to try again. Um, I do get very protective of some of the um, things that people say to some of the student athletes you know yeah, oh yeah. It ju that just breaks my heart and, it, and it's grown-ups I mean we're all we talk about this generation it is grown-ups that are just mean yep. to these kids yep. and um, that is a psychological reality it is so much easier for me to be brutishly mean yes. online than to do yeah, it to than your do face. It face to face I mean if you do it right. face to face you're a sociopath right <laughs> yeah. if you do it online yeah. it's like so it brings out it can bring out the worst of us uh, online and right. I think that's why Matt I think Matt doesn't want he that's a protective thing yeah. that he does and I, I can see why some coaches you know don't want their kids on there and I don't know Brian and Kyle are sitting here I, I, I from a media perspective in some ways it'd be better if if they don't uh, uh, have that situation, I don't know, got, got something. Is it a woodpecker? I don't know. That's we got a woodpecker here. This is great. This is on the fly. Um, you know that in our, from a media perspective, it'd be some ways that it'd be nice if all that stuff wasn't out there because uh, maybe it'd make our message boards even more prominent, but also the ability to, to tell stories differently. Uh, but everybody's everybody has their own broadcast vehicle. I have a yeah. niece. I have a niece mm -hmm. who uh, works, and she's in the uh, you know the. the um, the mother house and, and uh, Facebook. She's a cheese in Facebook. One of the things I've said to her is that Facebook is so broadly out there. Mm -hmm. I think there would be, a, uh, you know, it's too bad there isn't an option for a more managed social media that you really are talking to your chosen friends and mm -hmm. not everyone could look in on it yeah. because mm -hmm. what happens is it gets scattered out which sometimes that's good but a lot of times that's where you get in trouble where mm -hmm. someone who doesn't know you or know of you sees something Mm -hmm. on that line there really are no controls of exposure and when you're right. an athlete you know at a, at a, a prestigious university mm -hmm. it's like you get looked at you get seen mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. I think that's a big part of it too and, mm -hmm. and, and certainly as this all comes uh, and we do all try to figure this out okay Kathy with the what some of the you have some great programs and you still are following I think they have a monthly program mm -hmm. what anybody I mean I'm sure they're all exciting but uh, what's coming up here in terms of uh, what who will be in front of the okay. student athletes coming up so the last one that we had we talked about um, competitive greatness and actually we had Dwayne Carlisle come yeah. in mm -hmm. and um, I mean he's right there and he talked all about recovery and that one was so good because he, he drew a picture and he showed, you know, you work out really hard and you get your body all the way down to here and that's all mandatory. You would never miss that practice. But recovery is actually optional. Yeah. Mm. You know, that's your sleep, that's your nutrition, that's your, 
and we're trying to supply all of that for them, but at some point, that's got to be self-discipline. You want to know something that's interesting? I mean, my area is health psychology, mm -hmm. and I have to say, and this is sometimes a tough sell to certain populations, like with the police, for example, yeah. <laughs> but there's an enormous amount of research on, the, the, the term du jour is mindfulness, but it's basically mindfulness. A, a, a methods or practices of some sort of meditation. Mm -hmm. It's amazing the research that. that's yeah. going on, uh, mm -hmm. and basically, I think one of the, the less uh, glorious ways of talking about it is it give yourself 10 to 20 minutes a day of a, of a cognitive dump, mm -hmm. yeah. some practice yes. that sort of yeah. just yes. spills, and, and, you're, and it's, what's different about it is people have a suspicion that I'm getting benefits for those 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. No, the research is showing it is an accumulating mm -hmm. impact. And so if like you sleep. do it, yeah. exactly. And yes. so if you do it twice a day, yes. um, it will have an accumulating impact on your you know, blood pressure, heart mm -hmm. rate, uh, brain cohesion. A study they did that um, long-term meditators in their 60s had uh, much more gray matter than their non-meditating peers mm -hmm. and the same amount as a 30-year-old. I mean, it's really yeah. very we're impressive gonna start, We're going to start doing that right now. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> later. I think we've developed a fast friendship here, so I think yes. these guys will be talking, but we'll do this again. We're going to make this at least a semester by semester because there's, I think it's an interesting topic mm -hmm. that uh, uh, you guys can bring to the table, and, it, and it's ever-changing, ever evolving. There's probably a never dull moment no, no. on your Mondays yeah. Yeah. and your Tuesdays. She's on the front are, line. Yeah, she's on the front line. Okay, we, are, we have other front line to come. Delapo McCarthy has been gracious enough to join us, and Stacey Clarity will lead the discussion along with Kyle Charters in segment three. I want to thank Will Miller and Kathy Wright Eager for joining us. A true pleasure, and uh, we'll be back. If you missed part of the segment, you can watch it tonight, obviously, on WLFI.com and GoldenBlack.com. So Stacey will join, uh, will host the final segment. We'll look forward to watching that as well on Golden Black Live.